Hello, Mount Tabor. My name is Jim Annis, and I'm the worship leader here at the Ignite Worship Service that we hold here at Mount Tabor Church on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock in the Allspaw Worship Center. Uh, that's where we would be having your baccalaureate services in the worship center, but because of the times that we're in, the pandemic and what have you, we're not going to be able to do that. But let me tell you something. Uh, we at Mount Tabor Church here in your neighborhood community from Mount Tabor High School are very proud of you. You guys have persevered through something that no one else has ever persevered through, at least not many in our lifetime. We want to say that we're proud of you, that we're praying for you in your next step, whether that's college or tech school or the army or a job. And we want to let you know that we're very, very proud of you. It's been a tough year, but you guys have made it. Congratulations to you in the very unique class of 2020. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory. The King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king above all kings who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. sing for all that you've done for me worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free, oh, Jesus, I 
just sing for all that you've done for me. Hi everyone, so I know for a lot of you, whether you're a sophomore, senior, junior, or freshman, you're probably feeling disappointed that the school year, sports, prom, and the graduation ceremony has been canceled. I know you're probably thinking of all the other things you could be doing right now, like traveling and spending time with friends. One thing that I've really tried to keep in mind is to focus on the now and living a life to the most in its present state. Remember, it's all about perspective, and I know that easier said than done right now but if you can make it through this there's nothing you'll ever face in life you'll doubt you're capable of conquering so if you don't remember anything remember this train your mind to see the good in everything positivity is a choice the happiness of your life depends on the quality of your thoughts well hi everybody it's pastor bob and um just wanted to take a few moments to say congratulations in the midst of all this wackiness. It's not right that I should be saying congratulations through a camera lens and not to you in person, but we go with what we have, right? I feel oddly compelled to apologize. We um, old people have done a pretty good job at screwing up the world into which you now step. We've messed it up with our venom and our vitriol and our hate and our pride and our feeling that we have to get the last word in and just with our broken humanity. We've done a good job at messing up the world for you. And so now you step into that world and you're supposed to fix it. So fix it. But if it's any consolation to you on this day, um, I believe that you can. I know that you can. I know that you and God in partnership will work out a miracle because that's what God does through his people, is work out a miracle. And I have every confidence and every belief that that's what he's going to do through you. So while I, I apologize as an old person at messing up the world into which you now stand, I now charge you with fixing it in every confidence that you will. God's still in the miracle business, and he's going to pull off those miracles through you. You go get them and know that I love you. Thanks a bunch. Hi, everyone. My name is Abby Bennett, and I would like to share a verse that means a lot to me. From Exodus 33:14, and he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Oftentimes, our minds go into neutral, and our thoughts flow freely. We tend to feel anxious and alone. To get our minds back on track, all we have to do is turn towards God, bringing ourselves and our problems into his presence. Many problems vanish in the light of his love because you realize that you are truly never alone. This is super relevant during this time as our world faces a pandemic. We just have to remember that we are never alone as long as we bask in the incredible presence of our Lord. Congratulations! Sabre uh, seniors, so happy for each and every one of you. Proud of you for all the effort that you put forward to come to uh, this time where you can become uh, graduates of Mount Tabor High School. My name is Andy Tuttle, and I'm the Director of Student and Family Ministries here at Mount Tabor United Methodist Church. And I'm so thankful to give a shout out to each and every one of you. Um, I wish you well as you move forward in life, and I hope. Uh, that you continue in your relationship with God as well. I want to share a quick passage with you. Uh, one of my favorite passages, passages from Romans 8, uh, chapter Romans 8, starting in verse 35. Who will separate us from Christ's love? Will we be separated by trouble or distress or harassment or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, we are being, being put to death all day long for your sake. We are treated like sheep for a slaughter. But in all these things, we win in a sweeping victory through the one who loved us. I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Not death or life, not angels or rulers, not present things or future things, not powers or height or depth or any other thing 
that is created. Uh, I am so sorry for all the things that you all have had to go through, and it's been a rough end to your senior year. But God is still here, and Christ is still here, and nothing can separate you from that love of Christ. And I ask that you just stay and cling Christ in this time as you move forward in your endeavors and know that Corona and stay at home and all these other things uh, uh, can never get in the way or stand in the way of your relationship with God through Christ Jesus. Well wishes, love each and every one of you, and congratulations. One of my favorite verses is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. This verse stands out to me because God wants to connect with us. And he sent Jesus to be an example for us. And he was tempted too, but he chose right. And even though we may not think that this is relevant today, it still is because he faced a lot of temptation too, but he chose right. And that's what we should be doing and trying to do every day. Hey everyone, um, I'm Ashley Kiger, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you um, Psalm 56, three. And it reads, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? Um, when I was younger, this was always one of my favorite verses. I had it engraved on little stones in my room, and it was just something I would always say to myself. Um, you know, if I was just scared of the dark or something as minuscule as that, but now, especially in the state of the world, you know, when we live in such uncertain times, um, it really just helps me remember that no matter what's going on, you know, we can always put our trust in God and, you know, if we're afraid, we can lean on Him and that He's always there for us no matter what we're going through. So, yeah. Hello, seniors. This is Coach Muse. I just got a short little message for you. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room right out of the gate. Your 12th grade school year will be a year you will never forget. It will be a uh, year that will go down in history forever. You will be able to tell your children, your grandchildren, and others how your life changed and how the whole world changed because of the worldwide pandemic of COVID-19. This is not how any of us wanted our school year to end, and definitely not the last memory you wanted as seniors at Mount Tabor High School. What a life lesson you have learned at such a young age. Life is not always going to go your way. We are always uh, gonna have obstacles and trials and seasons of trials in our life. Our life will not be defined by the trials and obstacles that come our way, but how we deal with those tests and those trials in our life. And how we deal with it will develop our character. This will not be the last time in your life uh, that things will not go your way. You will have challenges. You are making it through this tough time in your life, and you will make it through many more down the road. So with that all said, let's make the best of your 12th grade graduation. Seniors, you've made it. Congratulations. Before you give yourself a pat on the back, you have to realize that you did not make it here on your own. You got here because you're at one of the best high schools in the state of North Carolina. You're a Mount Tabor Spartan. There's nothing like it. You have great administrators, tremendous teachers, staff, mentors, coaches, and classmates. Most of all, you have family members that have sacrificed a great deal to make sure that you could do your best every day. Please take time out of your day today and thank that special person in your life. Remember to never postpone gratification. So thanks moms, thanks dads, brothers, sisters, and grandparents. Seniors, each one of you are unique. Each of you come from different backgrounds, and you like different kinds of music, movies, art, sports teams, 
video games, and the list goes on and on. Being able to know what interests you will help you in the future. Seniors, you have done a wonderful job setting an example for the underclassmen here at Mount Tabor. Now it's time to move on. It's time to move forward with your life. Next year, you will be leaving your comfort zone, and you will be moving on with your life. Some of you will go to community colleges, some to small universities, some to big universities. Others will go to the military, and some of you will go straight into the workforce, and you'll start your jobs or careers. Certain emotions will stir up inside of you and also inside of your parents. Some of you will feel uncertain about your sense of belonging. Let me tell you, you have a great foundation and you are ready for your future. As you go to the next stage of your life, I want to give you some small advice. I want you to embrace and enjoy this new journey that you are about to embark on. As you go through uh, life, remember that you need to love others and serve others. Treat others as you would have them treat you. That's biblical. Luke 10, 27 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Seniors, remember to enjoy each day, and don't get too stressed out about the work that's going to be in front of you. Choose your friends wisely and make good, godly decisions. Be a lifelong learner. You will find out that your education is really just beginning. Read, read, and read some more. You need to keep the best-selling book of the year every year by your side. Pick it up often, read it, and reread it. And that book is the Bible. Seniors, in conclusion, remember where you came from. You are a Mount Tabor Spartan. Once a Spartan, always a Spartan. Spartans are strong-willed. You show endurance, courage, and self-control. You are always devoted to your community, and you are intelligent. Be sure to follow your heart and find a career that you are interested in and that you have passion for. Make good, godly, positive decisions in the future that will be good for others and for your well-being. Congratulations. I love you. And the teachers at Mount Table High School. Love you. Congratulations to the class of 2020. We made it. A Bible verse that has kept me going for my entire high school career would be Romans 8:28. For I know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Class of 2020, we have purpose. Never forget that God loves you because at the end of the day, no matter what you do, as long as it is right for you and as long as you commit to towards your happiness. That from the book of Proverbs, one of my most favorite part of the Bible. Stay lovely and stay humble. Peace. Congratulations to each of you, the class of 2020 of Mount Tabor High School. You have worked hard and anticipated this day, and now a new horizon awaits. When the new generation of Israelites finally reached the day when they would enter the promised land, the Lord said to their leader, Joshua, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. As you step into this new landscape of the next phase of your journey, it is our prayer that God give you strength and courage for the challenges ahead. Strength in knowing that God always fulfills his promises. And courage in knowing that the Lord is with you wherever you go. So with strength and courage in the knowledge that God is with you, we say congratulations and God bless you in your new adventure. Hi, my name is Courtney Taylor and a Bible verse that I really like is Romans 12 too. And it says, 
Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Um, I like this Bible verse because it's saying to sometimes go against social norms in order to understand God's plan for our lives. Congratulations, class of 2020. Hi guys, my name is Annie Wolf, and I wanted to share a verse that has been a really awesome reminder to me during this time about having full trust and faith in the Lord. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. To me, this means that if you give your full heart and trust to God, he will not steer you wrong. And if you put your complete trust in the Lord, you will be rewarded. He will set your life straight and lead you down the right path. I wish we could be celebrating together in person. I'm really glad that we can share baccalaureate together. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down. Let's go down, come on down, come on sisters, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Come on, brothers, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, mothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Come on, mothers, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Come on, sinners, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. It's a real honor for me to have this opportunity to speak at the 2020 baccalaureate service for Mount Tabor High School. After seven years away from the school district, it's nice to be included in this special event. For those of you who attended school in Winston-Salem Forsyth from kindergarten through sixth grade, 
it was my pleasure to serve as your superintendent. I've had several occasions to see Mr. Weiss this year. I'm sure that you would agree that he is a kind, thoughtful, and fair principal. And I know what a wonderful high school experience that you have enjoyed at Mount Tabor. Um, just to demonstrate my Spartan pride, you may not be able to see it, but I have gold specks on my tie encircled in blue. While Zoom, Google Hangouts, and WebEx meetings have made it possible to conduct a lot of business and classroom experiences during our time at home this spring, I really wish I could be with you face to face today. Realizing the great potential you represent, seeing your faces would give me that energy that makes speakers more interesting than simply reading their words. I will do my best to recreate that feeling. I hope that all of you and your family have remained healthy during the pandemic and that your family members have been able to make ends meet during this sudden economic downturn. I pray every day for all those negatively impacted by the virus. Hopefully, there will never be another virtual baccalaureate service or graduation ceremony. I want to begin my remarks today by offering my heartfelt congratulations to all of you upon your graduation from high school. This is one of the signature milestones in your life. Ironically, the pandemic provides a perfect example of the first of four takeaway messages that I want to leave with you today. No one could have predicted the world would experience a pandemic in the spring of 2020. History informs us of other plagues, epidemics, and pandemics, and clearly there are those in government and the private sector who are charged with preparing for such events. But no one can predict when they will occur. If we're honest with ourselves, I suspect that none of us really thought that such an event could happen short of an act of bioterrorism. And even a terrorist attack would likely have been more localized um, and not brought the entire world to its knees. I suspect that all of you have heard the expression, tomorrow is not promised. Indeed, James, one of Christ's disciples, tells us in James 4.14, Yet you do not know what tomorrow brings. Sarah Young, the author of Jesus Calling, a daily devotional book, focuses on several themes, one of which is that we can only experience the joy and peace that Jesus offers us today. If you're familiar with the book, it is written as if Jesus were talking to you. The devotion for April 11th said in part, to find joy in this day, you must live within its boundaries. I knew what I was doing when I divided time into 24-hour segments. I understand human frailty, and I know that you can bear the weight of only one day at a time. Do not worry about tomorrow or get stuck in the past. There is abundant life in my presence today. If you're not of the Christian faith, I'm sure that you would agree that we can only experience life today. Yesterday cannot be relived and tomorrow is yet to be. Most of us live our lives under the assumption that we can plan our future and in fact control our destiny. Planning and problem solving are important human behaviors. They help us prepare for tomorrow, but we must never forget that our only certainty is today. A deep awareness of the fact that we live within a day-to-day timeframe leads one to be thankful for each day and to try to leave our lives in a good place at the end of each day, no matter what is taking place. My wife purchased one of those, for lack of a better term, message pictures and hung it in our bathroom. It says, always kiss me goodnight. And I'm sure that you have heard the expression, don't go to bed angry. So the first takeaway that I want to leave with you today is this. Since we can only experience life one day at a time, we must cherish each day. It is priceless. Your road to this day has not always been straight and not always easy. Each of you has faced challenges and persevered through all the ups and downs of simply growing up. At this special moment, you need to know that your family is proud of you. The church family is proud of you. Your teachers and administrators are proud of you. And the community is proud of you. 
and I hope that each of you is proud of yourself for completing high school. This is the time that you should reflect on the closing of a large chapter of your life and celebrate the beginning of a new one. For most of you, the next chapter of your life will involve some form of higher education. At some point, all of you will be joining the workforce. Clearly, the nature of work has changed during my lifetime. The days of going to work for one company and staying there until retirement are disappearing. People are changing jobs eight to 10 times during their life, and many times it is because their job is being replaced by changes in technology. Farming is a great example. John Nesbitt reported in his book, Megatrends, that in the early 1900s, one third of the workforce worked on a farm. Today, Wiki Answers reports that fewer than 2% of Americans are considered farmers. Technology has allowed very few farm workers to produce a lot of food. My son-in-law works for John Deere, and the automation in tractors and farming equipment is mind-boggling. Field irrigation systems can sense the level of moisture in the soil, automatically turn on sprinklers, turn them off when the desired moisture level is reached, report the water usage, and notify the operator when water costs are going beyond budget. One thing is certain about work in the future. You will have to continue to learn. You will have to learn continuously. I'm optimistic that all of you are well on your way to learning how to learn. Many companies will keep training you at no cost if you're willing to keep working for them. If you don't have a skill, they will pay you while you acquire that skill. I also want to mention that one of the fastest growing groups of workers are entrepreneurs, people who are self-employed. I was in Bojangles one day and ran into a woman who worked as a custodian in the office on while I was superintendent. We used to talk often. She told me that she was still working, but she had started her own cleaning service and had two contracts to clean two large doctor's offices. She now has four employees. She is an entrepreneur. Winston-Salem helps people learn how to develop ideas into a business. In the next few weeks, I would encourage you to visit the Venture Cafe online. They offer sessions every Thursday beginning at 5.30 p.m. When large groups are allowed to assemble in the future, I would encourage you to visit Venture Cafe. Attendance is free, and is open every Thursday evening from 5.30 p.m. until about 9. It's located in the Bailey Power Plant, the building with the huge smokestacks in the Innovation Quarter. You go in and register in a at a computer kiosk, and they will print a name tag. It prints a name tag right there for you. And it sends you notices every week of what's upcoming. There's free food and lots of people to talk to. I've been there, encouraged people, and I encountered people there whose ages range from the late teens to the early 80s. They have several conference rooms and each week they offer different programs. Different businesses and community organizations will talk about how you can get support to developing a new idea. It's an interesting networking event. For example, you may love to cook and have your grandmother's recipe for barbecue sauce that is unlike any that you have ever tasted. And you think it should be bottled and sold. There are people there who can help you take that idea from conception to a startup business to market. One of the strong business supporters of the Venture Cafe is Mr. David Mounts, the Chief Executive Officer at Enmar. He and some other business leaders were developing and, and were interested in developing a support program for entrepreneurs. And they discovered a Venture Cafe in St. Louis. There are now eight Venture Cafes in the world, five in the United States and one each in three other countries and we are fortunate to have one. David Mounts refers to the Venture Cafe as the church for entrepreneurs. A second takeaway for you today is that work is changing. You will have to keep learning in order to consider jobs that are not yet created and entrepreneur opportunities abound. After I retired, I joined the education leadership department at High Point University it focuses on preparing school administrators to serve as school superintendents. A couple of years ago, High Point bought every student and faculty member a copy of the book Mindset by Carol Dweck. 
She came to the campus to speak. It is a very insightful book. Essentially, she believes that anyone can be successful. After 20 years of studying people and asking them questions and noticing how they approach life's challenges, she says people fall into one of two categories, those that have a fixed mindset and those who have a growth mindset. She says success in life depends on which mindset you adopt. Notice that I said the mindset that you adopt. So how do you decide and how do you know what mindset you have now? She says you can get an idea depending on whether you agree or disagree with these four statements. Statement one, your intelligence is something very basic about you and you can't change it very much. You agree or disagree. Statement two, you can learn new things, but you can't really change how intelligent you are. Statement three, no matter how much intelligence you have, you can always change it quite a bit. And statement four, you can always substantially change how intelligent you are. If you agreed with the first two statements, then she says you have more of a fixed mindset. And if you agree with either of the last two statements, you have more of a growth mindset. She says a lot of people think that intelligence is fixed because of IQ scores. She quotes Alpha Binet, who created the most widely used IQ tests in the world. Here's a quote from him, and I quote, a few modern philosophers assist, assert, a few modern philosophers assert that an individual's intelligence is a fixed quantity, a quantity which cannot be increased. We must protest and react against this brutal pessimism. With practice, training, and above all method, we manage to increase our attention, our memory, our judgment, and literally to become more intelligent than we were before." Unquote. High Point University wanted all students and faculty to develop a growth mindset. While students were the ultimate focus for Carol Dweck's work, the High Point leadership team were really interested in impacting the faculty because teachers are sometimes guilty of thinking that some students cannot do any better than they are doing. As a friend of mine, Dudley Flood says, students become what teachers think they can become. I hope that all or most of your teachers have had a growth mindset with you during your 13 years of school. Now you need to carry that mindset forward into a lifetime of learning. A third takeaway today is to maintain or develop a growth mindset. Your intelligence is not fixed. Never say that you can never learn how to do this or that. It simply depends whether you really desire to do a particular thing and are you willing to spend the time and effort that it takes to learn how to do it. I want to switch gears for a minute and talk about civic responsibility. One thing that is certain is that each of you will live somewhere and each of you will have the opportunity in our democratic society to participate in community decisions. By opportunity, I mean that you can choose to vote in local elections. You can choose to perform volunteer work for your church or another organization. You can choose to attend community meetings. You can choose to support evaluation, uh, education, rather. You can choose to support education in your community by encouraging your children or serving as a mentor for a young child. Or you can choose to do nothing. David Kearns, former head of Xerox, said, that no organization is better than its employees. And I submit to you that no community is better than its citizens. I want to encourage you to spend your, to spend your life, to not spend your life as an armchair critic, but rather get out of your chair and become involved in your community. Take the time to keep yourself informed about those many opportunities to participate in making your community a better place. Since becoming a county commissioner five years ago, I've discovered that few people are willing to run for public office. We enjoy the fruits of our democracy, but sometimes are not willing to assume leadership roles. I'd like to encourage you to consider serving on your local school board or serve as a city councilman or serve as a county commissioner. Democracy is a wonderful form of government, but everyone must participate to make it work properly. A fourth takeaway from my remarks today is to be engaged in your community. Many men and women have sacrificed their lives 
to preserve our freedoms and our democracy. And I want to encourage you to not take our way of life for granted and become engaged. As you set out on this next step of your life journey, I'd like to recommend three, what I would call foundational books written by Thomas Freeman that provide a context to the world today. I've led discussions on these books with the students who served on the Superintendent's Advisory Committee, which was one of my favorite groups to meet with. I served, uh, uh, favorite groups I met with while superintendent. These books provide many facts but Thomas Freeman organizes those facts and makes personal observations. And while he has received many accolades for his work, he does have his critics. Thomas Freeman is a columnist for the New York Times. He is the recipient of three Pulitzer Prizes and has authored a total of seven best-selling books. The three books I'm recommending to you include The World is Flat, written in 2005, Hot, Flat, and Crowded, written in 2008, and that used to be us, written in 2011. I'll only say a few words about each book and hope that you will get a chance to read them in the next few years. The World is Flat is about how technological changes have leveled the playing field in every aspect of our lives. Hence the title of the book, The World is Flat, The Playing Field Has Been Leveled. Friedman discusses 10 flatteners that have, been allowed, that have allowed people and companies in any country to compete in business and commerce. Essentially, technology has tightened global competition. The impact of that has led to surprising facts like there are more federal income tax returns processed by accountants who reside outside the United States than within it. And recently I read that most of the N95 medical masks that are in such high demand are manufactured outside the United States. Clearly events in other countries can directly impact the availability of goods and services in America. Hot, Flat and Crowded provides a comprehensive worldwide overview of the impact of climate change. The full title of the book is Hot, Flat and Crowded, Why We Need a Green Revolution and How It Can Renew America. And finally, the full title of That Used to Be Us is that used to be us, how America fell behind in the world it invented, and how we can come back. This book is co-authored by Michael Mandenbaum, a foreign policy expert at Johns Hopkins University. This book analyzes four great challenges America faces, globalization, the revolution in information technology, the nation's chronic deficits, and our pattern of excessive energy consumption and suggest what we need to do in order to sustain the American dream and preserve American power in the world. So these three books provide you with a background for the last three takeaways, namely work and career choices are changing rapidly. A growth mindset will give you confidence to take on a challenge, take on challenges. And in order for our democracy to survive, you will have to participate. But don't forget about the first takeaway. Cherish life and those you love every day. If you live by these four takeaways, your life will become a witness to others. Enthusiasm for life and service to others is contagious. And in the words of Tim McGraw, always remain humble and kind. For Christmas in 2014, one of my friends gave me a, a copy of Sarah Young's book, Jesus Calling, that I mentioned earlier. I read it every night during 2016 and 15 and 16. And then in 2016, Sarah Young published her latest book, which is entitled Jesus Always. Um, it remained on the bestseller list for a long time. I bought it, read it every day in 2017 and 2018. And then I will switch back to Jesus Calling. These books have complemented my spiritual growth and helped me put life into perspective. I'd like to close by sharing the January 1st devotion in Sarah Young's Jesus Calling. I've edited it a little for this occasion. Remember, this is written as if Jesus were talking to you. Do not dwell on the past. As you experience this new beginning, rejoice that I am continually working newness into your life. Don't let past disappointments and failures define you or dampen your expectations. This is the time to make a fresh start. 
I am God of unlimited creativity. Expect me to do surprising things in your life that stretches out before you. Today is a precious gift. The present moment is where I meet with you. So seek my face throughout this day that I have made. Search for signs of my loving presence as you journey along the path of life. Look for the little pleasures I have strewn alongside your pathway, sometimes in surprising places, and thank me for each one. Your thankfulness will keep you close to me and help you find joy in your journey. Members of the class of 2020, I congratulate you and extend my sincere best wishes for a future of your choosing. As you begin that future, I urge you to invest something of yourself in improving the world you are inheriting. God bless. I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. An empty man's praise, treasures that fade, never enough. You came along, put me back together, and every desire. Now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, for you've seen them all, you still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. There's not a place that mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory, you're the only one who can. You turn mornings to dancing, you give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory, you're the only one who can. turn graves into gardens, you turn bombs into armies, you turn seas into highways, you're the only one who can. Oh, there's nothing better than you, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Sing it again. 
Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. You turn graves into gardens. Turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. For I spoke a word, you were singing Shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Down, lie, you won't tear down, coming after me. No 
shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Hey, graduates, I'm Pastor Mark, senior pastor at Mount Tabor United Methodist Church, and it's been our joy to, to uh, host the baccalaureate service for the seniors at Mount Tabor High School for many, many years, and we are so sorry that we did not get to do that this year, but so grateful to uh, uh, Ginger uh, Elliott and those who were uh, had the uh, creativity, we're with all the foresight to create this virtual baccalaureate service. Uh, thanks for being a part of this. Uh, the year 2020 is turning out to be quite a year that I'm sure none of us will ever forget. I'm sorry that you're not getting to experience uh, all the things that go along with graduation, the, uh, the, commencement, the commencement exercises, the graduation parties, uh, uh, even the baccalaureate service, to be able to do those in person. I know we'll be able to make those up perhaps uh, in the future in different kinds of ways, but I'm just praying that all of this is going to make... Uh, something good is going to give something put something good into our lives that we're going to be better people because of what we're going through know that you are loved uh, i add my own thanks to everybody uh, dr don martin and all those who have uh, contributed to this baccalaureate service the, the seniors the students the, those with uh, who have shared their gifts and abilities and especially again to ginger elliott and her team for putting uh, this year's back virtual baccalaureate service together well, I wish you well. God is with you, and God will be with you wherever you go. Uh, it's my honor to pronounce a benediction uh, over this virtual baccalaureate service. In the words of Joshua 1.9, Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And that's a fact. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen.